just give us a summary. What, what were some of the highlights of that quite fiery speech that Netanyahu delivered to Congress? Yeah, so I think, um, in essence, Netanyahu's speech can be split into what he said and what he um, declined to say. In terms of what um, he did say, as we just heard, he made a big point of speaking about Iran, who is behind multiple proxies in the Middle East, including Hamas in Gaza and Hezbollah in Lebanon, which Israel has been fighting since October 7th, as well as the Houthis in Yemen and other militias in Syria and in Iraq that the U.S. and other Western allies, as well as a group of moderate Sunni Arab countries have all been fighting in recent years. He said the world is at a historic crossroads. This is a clash between barbarism and civilization, those who glorify death and those who sanctify life. And he made a point of how the U.S. and Israel must stand united to win this axis of terror. The U.S., he said, was the only nation standing in Iran's way to spread its revolution throughout the world. And he made an argument that Israel was not just defending itself, but also helping to defend the United States. Mm. I mean, the backdrop, uh, as, as the Prime Minister even referenced himself, was, was one of controversy. There are plenty of demonstrations taking place. And also, uh, there were demonstrators outside Capitol Hill calling for the secure release of hostages. Uh, what has been the reaction to the speech back home in Israel? So maybe um, that has to do, um, as I mentioned um, just now, with what Netanyahu did not um, clarify or did not say in his speech. He did not say what his stance was in the current ceasefire negotiations that would also involve the return of Israeli hostages from Gaza. Um, hopefully, he did not give um, any um, detail or even a general statement saying where things stand on that and what are the sticking points. He just said that generally talks are still underway. However, in reality, these, these talks have been um, stopped with the Israeli negotiating team not due to resume them until um, early next week. These talks will be a major issue in um, Netanyahu's meeting with um, U.S. President Joe Biden today. And speaking on Gaza on the day after the war, Netanyahu did specify a general vision of a demilitarized and de-radicalized Gaza, the way Germany and Japan had been after World War II. And he still did not say who would be taking the reins after Hamas is removed from power there. And finally, he did speak about um, a broader vision of the Middle East, describing an alliance against Iran, um, an extension of the Abraham Accords. He, he called it the Abraham Alliance. But he gave no detail on how that could work, given that Arab countries meant to be included in such an alliance insist on a two-state solution for the Palestinians, uh, something that Netanyahu's government his current government refuses to talk about. So I guess the, the reaction in Israel, to um, very briefly sum it up, is um, on the one hand, um, you know, Israelis did take some pride in this speech. This was um, a, a sort of historic event because Netanyahu um, became yesterday um, the first world leader to ever address um, Congress for four times. And at the same time, um, back home, um, large portions of the public uh, are thinking that um, more needs to be done in terms mm. of um, releasing Israeli hostages and seeing how this war yeah. um, wraps and what comes next.